to, to Judas now that they're in Babylon. They're under an oppressive government. My, we could spend a lot of time right there, couldn't we? But there was a lot of uncertainty about the future. That's why God told them that I haven't expected in. This is not, I didn't just throw you out here. I didn't just send you into Babylon to turn my back on you and let whatever happens happen. He said, I have an end. I have a purpose in this. Even though it was well-deserved judgment upon them, God is still going to use it in their lives to make them what they ought to be and to help them fulfill the will of God in their life. Amen. As we face uncertainty today, where is the economy going? Down? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we hope for a rebound. Hang on one more year. Uh, hang on till we get the new election. Maybe, maybe not. Let me ask you a question. Is your faith in the economy? No. Is your faith in the government? No. no, they're going to fail you. Our faith ought to be in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and as God is telling them that God is going to use these the situation of their bondage in Babylon to do a work in their lives and to craft them and to create them into being what they need to be. He said, because of this, he said, you're going to pray. Now, that's a given, isn't it? Let me ask you a question. Do you pray more when the good times or in the bad times? <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and admit, oh, I pray the same, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. We pray more when things are bad, aren't we? Why? Because things are bad. <laughs> we have a tendency when things are good probably to just kind of skim through a prayer. Or you may not even pray at all when things are going well. But when things get pretty rough, we have a tendency to get down to prayer. We get down to business, don't we? And thankfully the Lord said that you will, that you will ask and I will answer. Amen. That gets us through verse 12. <laughs> what a marvelous thing. God says, I have a plan for you. And in that plan, as you begin to fulfill that plan, you will pray. And when you pray, I will answer. But through this all, God wants more out of us. The message this morning is going to come from verse 13. Verse 13 is not on any Christian book. It's not on any plate. It's not on plaques. It's not on coffee cups. You know why? Why? Because this is really what God wants. God says, I know my plan for you. I have an expected end for you. I know what you would have, what I want of you. And he says, and I want you to pray. You go, oh my, yeah, it's to make me a better Christian. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> but verse 12 alone is not going to make you a better Christian. You say, well, I'm praying. <laughs> what are you generally praying about? Things. What are you generally play, praying about? Wants. Oh, yeah, there's some needs there. We throw that in there. But is the Christian life just getting and receiving from God? Amen. No. Verse 13. God wants this in the life of his people. Now, they're in judgment because of their own idolatry. They are in judgment because of their disobedience <clears throat> unto the Lord. But in the process of God meeting out judgment upon them, he shows his grace and mercy. He talks about the natural progression as we grow. We get to the place that we're going to pray. But in verse 13, he says, And ye shall seek me and find me. We love that. Amen. Yeah. Seeking the Lord. But look at the rest of the verse. When you shall search for me with all your hearts. God says, I can be found. You go, I thought that's what prayer was. God said he would answer, so I must have found the Lord. Wait a minute. He's talking about something besides just meeting your needs through prayer. He is talking about us coming to know the Lord in a greater in a more quality way than just an average Christian life. Now, I know we're living in a day and age now, the average Christian don't pray. Mm -hmm. Or if he prays, he's praying a prayer of want. All these yahoos on TV that profess to be preaching the gospel, that never mention the gospel, just what you can get out of God. Mm -hmm. 
what they call the prosperity gospel, which is not a gospel. The gospel is death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel is Jesus Christ died for your sin, and unless you accept him as Savior, you're going to die and go to hell, the punishment for rejecting the Son of God. Amen. That's the gospel. Amen. The Christ is calling you to himself. It's not what you can get from God. Now, does God give? Absolutely. You can't outgive God. Right. We've all been blessed abundantly and above <laughs> what we deserve for sure. Amen. That's not on the relationship with the Lord. Mm, amen. He says, I want you to be able to know me more intimately. Yeah. No, I'm not taking you down a bizarre road. <clears throat> this is what God wants of us. Yeah. Notice the process. Yeah. He has a will for us. We seek the will of God. We pray and God answers. But he says, then, once you've seen what God can do through prayer, he said, you will seek me. And I will be found when, all right, this is one of those promises that comes with a condition. Now, we don't like those. I love the promises of God, don't you? Yeah, I mean, that's what keeps us going, doesn't it? Knowing God has made me some promises. Yeah, amen. But some promises have a condition to them. Yes. I use this one all the time. When... 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. That's a conditional promise. God promised he would forgive, but if you confess, something on my part causes God to do something. Now there are promises that are unconditional. There are some that God just does just simply because we're his child. <laughs> But those things that cause us to grow and those things that cause us to become better Christians are conditional. God requires something on our part. The day and age in which we live now, most Christians don't want to do anything. Much less anything extra. Much less anything more than coming and listen to a sermon and, and then go home and complain about how long it was. And I'll give y'all plenty to complain about. <laughs> but God's saying, listen, if you seek me, not just what I can do for you, but seek me, I'll be found when you seek with all your heart. Amen. I ran across this verse a few days ago and Begin to contemplate that verse. What's the Lord trying to tell us? With all our heart. Now that's easy to say, isn't it? Amen. Amen. I love the Lord with all my heart. And we'll use that phrase all the time about something. But here comes the question. This is what we're going to talk about this morning. To have all of the heart to be complete. There can't be anything else there. Nothing else can be there. Yeah. Now that's hard to attain, isn't it? Purity. <coughs> to attain something. You know, you, you buy a, a bottle of orange juice or grape juice or whatever. Contains 99% juice. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought I bought orange juice. Mostly. But guess what? They're letting you know there's something else in there. And oftentimes in our hearts, we, we talk about we love the Lord with all our heart and, and I'm seeking the Lord with all of my heart. But it really means mostly. So there's some things in our hearts that can stand in the way of us truly seeking God. Amen. Now, if God continues to lead, this message is going to carry on for a week or two. But today I want to talk about one thing that so easily abides within our hearts that keeps us from fully seeking God with all of our heart. Now he said if we, if we get to the place that's all of our heart, we'll be found in. 
Too many Christians are a little discouraged with God oftentimes because we think it's God's fault we haven't seen more of him in our life. We think it's God's fault. God's just holding back. God is, is just trying to test me. Uh, God's not showing me all that he can do and be in my life. God's desire is for you to say that. God's desire is for you to know him fully. He's not holding back. The restriction comes on our part. Again, with the analogy of the juice, why does it have something else in there? Well, there's got to be preservatives. It's got to be able to sit on the shelf for a long time. Okay? So we think it's what's good for us. You see, the part in our heart that keeps it from being all of our heart is that which is of our choosing. And most of the time, we think it's best. Because if it's not, then we have to admit, <clears throat> I'm exactly not all I should be for the Lord. We got a reason, excuse for all the thiamine and all of the uh, sorbic gum and all the things they put in extra ingredients and stuff. They're always telling us, what well, is for your good? Extra vitamins. But what about our hearts? <laughs> I want to talk about fear. Or lack of faith. Because they're the same thing. Where there is faith, there is no fear. Where there is fear, there is no faith. Amen. When you read through the New Testament, they're often interchangeable. Jesus rebuked his disciples for having no fear, or, I mean, no faith or little faith, or another time for having fear. Why do you fear? Hmm. How many times does the Bible tell us to fear not? Amen. Why does it tell us that? It was telling us that we must have faith. Scriptures over in Hebrews 11 tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. Well, I got faith. <laughs> Most of our faith, remember, we're kind of like the fellow whose son was uh, demonically possessed and he comes to Jesus because the disciples couldn't cast out the demon and, and Jesus says well all things are possible if you believe and he said I believe and then his very next statement was help my unbelief amen. Amen. amen wait a minute did he contradict himself did he call himself a liar no because he said he didn't have enough faith well oh, I got faith <laughs> but I don't think I got enough the moment we realize where we are in the faith department, one begins to give us a heart that is cleaner and pure before God. Because when the faith comes in, well, what is the difference or how does faith and fear interchange or how come they're, they're put together? Because our fear is generally demoting God in our life. Because he's always telling us fear not. So I'm disobedient when I do fear. You go, oh, but I can't help it. Some things are fearful. I know David himself, even in Psalms, uh, he, he said in those times when I fear, he just said I never feared. He says, but when I fear, I think on you. Yeah, it's a constant process. It's kind of like our thing that we say we live in imperfect world imperfect bodies and the devil's on the loose and and we're called to sinless living but we'll never become sinless but we can sinless, sinless. <clears throat> our problem is when we have less faith we are faithless but we ought to get to the place that that we have more faith not less faith it ought to be a striving. It ought to be a growing. It ought to be a process where we begin to trust more and more in the, uh, in the Lord. As we grow as Christians, it ought to be a process just as we learn to sin less in our life by controlling the temptations and the urges and trusting God for that strength. We ought to be relying upon God to increase our faith. When was the last time you prayed as, as the child's dad prayed? Help thou my unbelief. Amen. 
because the devil has fooled us and we, we believe I have great faith. You've probably gotten an answer to prayer by faith. Do you think I've, I've made it? I've got faith. Stop and think. You may have had sufficient faith to deal what, with what you have faced to this point in your life. But what if it gets worse? Oh, I wish I could stand up here and tell you 2023 is going to be the best year of your life. But I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know. I don't know what's going to come to pass. The question is, you got enough faith. Amen. You got enough faith to face it. Amen. Well, I guess we'll see. No, it's kind of like the will of God when I when I tell you all the time, you we want a we want a trial period on the faith of God or, or the will of God. God, let me know what your will is and I'll give it a test and I'll see if I'll do it. Uh-uh. Oftentimes the reason Christians don't know the will of God in their life is they have not surrendered to it. We are not living by faith. The Bible tells us we are to walk by faith, not by sight. But we want to see everything first. Why is the greatest human thing? Seeing is believing. Do you know what faith is? Believing and then seeing. Amen. In Hebrews 11 it says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Amen. We want to see it first. I can have faith if I see the cavalry coming. Amen. I can hold the fort when I see the cavalry on the way. When well, we sing that old song, that old hymn, Hold the Fort, because Jesus said, I am coming. Amen. Do you see him? Amen. No. I don't have to see him to know he's coming. Yeah, that's, right. Amen. Amen. that's what faith does. Amen. But our lack of faith in our life, we're, we're trying to base it on everything else. We've come up with that fake faith that so the world is, it, it, the Christian world, so-called Christian world is talking about today. If you can believe it and you can name it and you can claim it, then you got faith. No, you got a big old desire for something. I don't mean you have faith. Let me tell you what true faith is. It is believing that God can do absolutely anything. Amen. Faith is not believing God's going to do it for me. Because I don't get to choose the will of God. Real faith is God, God, whatever comes, I will trust you with it. Amen. The reason many think that they have found God because they prayed, I had faith, I named it, I claimed it, and I got it. Well, first you've got to make sure who gave it. Yeah. Yeah. Scripture says all good and perfect gifts come from above. Not all gifts. The devil can bless you just as well. And all of his gifts are to take you away from the Lord and not draw you closer to him. God's will is not always. What if Israel prayed, God, don't let us go into bondage? Guess what? They did. How many folks have you prayed to not die? And they did. All oh, those crowd tell you, well, you just didn't have enough faith. Really? God didn't intend. The Bible says it's once appointed unto man once to die. There is a death date for all of us. Amen. And when God's ready, I don't care how much faith you've got. And besides that, if we could pray death away, think how crowded this world would be. Nobody would ever die. Let me encourage you. If I get close to death, don't you pray I survive. Let me go. I was thinking this week when Brother Steve passed away, I, my first thought was good for him. I'm going to pray for the family. Yes. But good for him. I got a little bit jealous. Because he's already there. Think about all the things that he's doing. I can't remember who I was talking to. I think it was Brother Clyde. We was talking this week that I uh, that we about got more folks in heaven than we got here left. Amen. Yeah. I kind of got a feeling as soon as my my congregation gets bigger up there than it is here, God may call me home and go pastor that one, not this one. Amen. But our faith, 
We say we have faith. And it's easy to, to say. Let me ask you a question. Is where God revealed himself to you. Is faith standing in the way? Now let's go back to the fear. A seeking Christian sins most of the time out of fear. It's not rebellion. A seeking Christian, a Christian that really wants to know the Lord, his sins are grounded in his fear, not his rebellion. Because if you're really seeking the Lord, your desire is not to rebel against the Lord. Amen. But sin is rebellion. Yeah, but the sin oftentimes is generated by fear, not rebellion. God expects all of us to share the gospel. Amen. All of us are to be preachers. Amen. We're to tell others about Christ. Now, do you not do it because you don't want anybody to get saved? No. Do you not do it because God said do it and I'm just not going to do it? No. You don't because you fear what somebody might say to you. It's not out of rebellion to God. It's out of a lack of faith. It is from fear. Men? Amen. What if somebody just cusses me out? You'll survive. In all my years of ministry, I've never been punched for sharing the gospel. I've been told, get out of here, shut up. I don't want to hear any of it. <laughs> but I've never been physically accosted. Early years of the ministry, I was knocking doors and was talking to folks, and this fellow come to the door. He's about six foot seven, about 345. Harry as he could be, is wearing one of those wife beaters. <laughs> I thought I'd done found a gorilla. <laughs> and he kind of opened the door and said, what do you want? <laughs> I said, well, I stopped by to see if you attend church anywhere. Occasionally. I said, really, I want to know if you died tonight, do you know you, where you would spend eternity? And he looked at me and he smiled. He said, yes. I will be in heaven. Amen. I was scared to death. That man was... I thought that was the time I was going to get hurt. <laughs> now, the closest I ever got close to it, I knocked the door, this, this little small lady come to the door, and I started talking to her about the Lord. She backed up and slammed the door just as hard as she could. I looked down to make sure my toes wasn't there. <laughs> but I've never been physically accosted. Where does the fear come from? Why are you afraid to tell somebody about it? Well, what do they think about it? They'll think you care about their soul. Amen. Is that a bad thing? Oh, they, they, they may make fun of me. Oh, bless your heart. Like they didn't make fun of Jesus. Right. He was dying on the cross and they were making fun of him. Amen. That's you can't handle a little ridicule. Mama didn't teach you something right. Amen. Sticks and stones. <laughs> but it's out of fear. Why didn't we not live the life we ought to live? Morally. Well, I don't know everybody would think I'm a Goody two shoes. Be glad you got shoes and praise the Lord and live the way you ought to. She's <laughs> out of fear. What does somebody think? Well, let me throw the third one out there and get in trouble before we move on. How come you don't tithe? You 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 don't want the lights to stay on in the church? You you don't like the heat and the cooling? You don't want money going to the mission field for people hearing the gospel around the world? Amen. No. See, that would be rebellion. Mm -hmm. Why don't you do it? Fear? Fear. Yeah. Or you can't pay my bills? Or you can probably pay your bills. You probably just can't go play and have all the toys you want. Amen. Because I promise you, God has given you enough. Yeah. Amen. Probably not as much as you want, but God has given you enough. Why don't you do it? Yeah, I just got some folk mad at me. <laughs> oh, but preacher, you just don't know my life. No, but I know what the Word of God says. Amen. And I know human nature. And I know the problem is not your rebellion. Your problem is your fear. You don't trust God enough. Amen. 
Oh, but if I did, I, I, I would certainly begin to suffer. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> suffer because you did what was right. Amen. God tested you to see if you were pure. Uh huh. See, I told you most of the problem, not rebellion, it's fear. Too many Christians are afraid to serve God. They're afraid to do the things God wants us to do. Out of their fear, they're really rebellious. Amen. What a shame. The Lord says, seek me and you will find me when you've come with all your hearts. Amen. Your fear, your lack of faith is keeping you from knowing the Lord as you ought to. Amen. And most of you have already said, yeah, but. Do you know what that phrase means? You're scared. If you can't take God's word and God's promises at face value and put them into practice, you're scared. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not calling you names. I'm telling you the spiritual condition you're in. Now, they ain't going to tell you that on TV. Because you tell them that, you'll, you'll turn them off and not send them any money. But I'm trying to help you this morning. Many a Christian lives his entire life unable to fully find the Lord. Not salvation. Notice, we got verse 12, and the light's where most Christians get to, and that's it. They progressed in the Christian life. <clears throat> they can pray. They've gotten answers to prayer. Verse 12, he said, you'll pray, and you will ask, and I will answer. Amen. And you've got that. You'll cling that. You'll go, I've made it. I'm there. But isn't there a little bit of yearning in your hearts? Isn't there a little bit in your life right now that you realize, I'm not there yet? And I don't know that we ever fully get there because we're constantly growing. We're constantly striving. But which direction are you going? Are you draw, drawing closer unto the Lord? Or are you stuck? You've got to a place that you're satisfied. You're complacent with it. And all the while the Holy Spirit is drawing you closer and closer to the Lord. And you've probably admitted to yourself, I, I would love to be a better Christian. I would love to be closer to the Lord than what I am. But he doesn't have your whole heart. You're not found him. When we begin to understand our lack of faith, it really is. No, faith is not being able to pray down something out of heaven. Real faith is to just obediently do that which God asks us to do. Amen. That's real faith. No matter what goes on, no matter the consequences, no matter how bad it gets by being faithful unto the Lord. My, the Bible is full of folks who drew closer to God. I think about Daniel. When Daniel knew the decree had been signed, nobody could ask a petition of anyone but the king. And three times a day, he went to his room, opened his windows. All could see him on his knees. Praying unto the Lord. Amen. And he ended up in the lion's den. God brought him through. Amen. What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They wouldn't bow to the image. And they told the king, if we perish, you perish. we perish. Right. There's faith. Right. Oh, we can have faith and nothing bad happens. Amen. I said, King, we're, we're not going to bow no matter what. You throw us in the fiery furnace. He said, you not know. I, I throw you in the fiery furnace. He said, so? If we perish, we perish. Amen. That's faith. Amen. And what happened? The furnace was fired up seven times normal. 
It was so hot, the men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them in the fire, they perished. They died from the heat. The king looked in there and he saw, did we not put three people in the fire? The, who is this fourth? But that of the Son of God. Amen. 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 I wish I had the, fee, the faith to go be thrown into a fiery furnace. I don't know that I do. I would like to think I do. The time may be coming when I get thrown in jail for preaching. Now that I believe I can do. But that ain't going into a fiery furnace. I'd hope my faith is true enough that I can say if I perish, I'll perish. I'm okay with that. Whatever God wants. Yes. This is the way God's chosen me to leave this world. I just pray that it wouldn't be painful. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Stephen, when he was stoned, I don't think Stephen felt one of them. He looked up into heaven and saw the Son of God stand up. Amen. You always find Jesus sitting on the throne. He's standing Amen. to honor Stephen's faithfulness. Stephen knew God. Daniel knew God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew God. Beyond just praying and getting answers. Because they're thinking, you know, if we perish, what would they pray for? Not to end up in that fire. But if we do, God, I'm good with it. Oh, we claim we're seeking the Lord. We claim that we're searching. And all the while, we know what's in the way. Faith is not quite what it ought to be. Too many things scare us. Too many things cause us to doubt. What if? The devil loves that one, doesn't he? He can get you to begin to doubt and go, yeah, but what if? Well, the three Hebrew children, well, if we perish, we perish. So what if it if happens? You don't think God can take care of it? We claim that we claim the promises of God. Can you really trust him with them? Can you really trust God with those promises? Woo. Like I say, everybody loved verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I have that I think toward you. If you still got your Bible open, look down verse 4. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Now I know we look down there past verse 11, and God says that he's going to take them back home. You will go back to Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. But can you live in Babylon? Can you endure the 70 year captivity to the fulfillment of that promise? God said, I sent you there and I can bring you out. Amen. Not I can't. I will. Amen. Oh, but Lord, I'll never live that long. Yeah, but you can die faithful unto the Lord. Isn't that what it's to be? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. He didn't say, well done, thou that did all of these great and marvelous things. He just said, thou faithful servant. Where does faithfulness come from? By faith. Faith generates faithful. Faithful generates faithfulness. Amen. Are you at that place you can surrender everything unto the Lord? That everything you have, everything you're going to be, is Lord's. Yeah. <clears throat> you got no faith to do that. I remind you often, if you want to test your faith, if God came and told you he wanted everything you have, what are you going to do? I think of Job. What Job do when... God let Satan take everything away. Even his health. God just told Satan, you got to spare his life. He's sitting there scraping the boils, having lost all of his children, all of his possessions. And he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Amen. 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 That man had faith. That's why God allowed the devil to test him like he did. He knew Job had faith. He knew when it was all said and done, he wouldn't take the advice of his wife and she gets a lot of wrath. I think she just felt sorry for him. She said, curse God and die. Get out of your misery. He said, I can't. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because when God took Allowed Satan to take his children. Job hit his knees. When he began to get word of having lost all of his all, all of his herds, Job hit his knees. Yeah. Us modern Christians, I don't think we know near what we think we know. God allowed that to happen. Would you be there with the potsherd? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most of be crying out, God, why did you let this happen? How could you do this to me? Why do we find God when we're tested? Because our faith is tested. What gets in the way of this knowing God at a greater level? It's called fear. He's standing in the way. God, you know I would, but there is no buts in faith. God, you, you know I would, but there is no faith there. Faith says, yes, God. Faith says, absolutely. Can you do that? He said, when? Oh, the conditional word. We love to read that. You will seek me and you will find me. And we will stop right there in that verse. But you got to hear it all. <laughs> then the verse 13, he says, when you shall search for me with all your hearts. Mm -hmm. If there's something in the way, you don't have all your heart. Now he's writing to folks that have just been carried away captive. They just lost their home, their homeland. Many of them have been mistreated on the journey. Sometimes study about what the troops would do to keep people in line when they carried them away captive. They would often take wire and run it through their hand, through their cheeks on both sides and wire their hands like this. Well, you can't fight if your hands are wired to your face. They would strip them naked, walk them shoeless. You can't run real far. The humility that they bore. And when they got to Babylon, God said, Seek me, and you shall find me. When you have sought with all your heart. Those trials and tests are to get rid of the dross. To get rid of the things that stand in the way. To get rid of those things that prohibit us from fully trusting and believing in the Lord. As long as we can think I can. Your faith is in your paycheck. Your faith is in your 401k. Your faith is in your ability. Your faith is in your intelligence. Your faith is in your opportunities. But it's not in God. Sometimes God takes those away. So you'll find out where your faith really is. Amen. Here they are captive. In a foreign land. Oh but God is so good to them. He shows them his mercy. Build a house and dwell in it. Plant a garden and eat the fruit thereof. Marry. Have children. Have your children's have children. <laughs> and then he says, then you will pray and I will answer. But then he asks, he guess requires a little more. Well, God, I didn't curse you when, 
we went into captivity. God, we didn't deny you. And God says, I want just a little more. A little more. I want all your heart. I want all your heart. What's occupying room in your heart? Is it fear? Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed.